So today I'm talking about planting bulbs in containers. Now there's a huge selection of bulbs. A lot of plants grow uh, in bulb form and bulbs are really kind of a cool uh, a thing in itself because it's basically a plant that has its own food source wrapped around it um, and so it can survive a lot of different conditions and a lot of different environments. Um, and bulbs are just a lot of fun. And what I always hear is when people come in in the spring and they say, I see all these daffodils and tulips popping up and I want to plant some. Well, you missed the boat. So I always kind of like to reiterate that fall is a great time to plant bulbs. And we just got our bulbs in. We've got a great selection. Lots of daffodils, tulips, allium, muscari. There's a great selection. There's also some vegetables. So if you're looking at doing some onions or garlic, it's a great time to plant. So we've got some garlic and onions in. So we've got shallots, onions, uh, white onions, yellow onions, red onions, lots and lots of different types of garlic. It's a great thing to do that. And they're very, very easy to plant and produce. Um, and you can get a little bit of a, a spring crop and then again in the summer. So uh, you get a lot of uh, reward for just a little bit of work. Uh, Patrick, what is a good time to bring in your herbs and vegetables into your greenhouse and what type of care over the cold weather months? Uh, so Patrick, great question, um, and it doesn't have to pertain to bulbs, so thank you Patrick. Uh, any question that you got, feel free to, to fire away. Uh, for herbs, uh, and Patrick, I think you've asked uh, some questions before, so I think you're in Williamsburg. Uh, the frost date, the, the, the earliest that we typically have a frost in our neck of the woods here in Virginia Beach, is going to be around November 15th. You might be a little bit earlier, November 10th. So just watch it. You really want the temperatures at night not to get below 50. So that's going to still be some time. So you can continue to grow those outside. Uh, moving them to a greenhouse now um, is not going to be the worst thing either. So if you're trying to get more production out of them, as we get cooler nights and shorter days, you're going to have less production. So if you're actually cutting those herbs and growing those herbs for to, to use in your cooking, then you're going to want to do that uh, fairly soon. I would say in the next two to three weeks, try and get them into your greenhouse so they can continue that growing so they're not going into a dormancy level and then coming back out of it. Uh, so I'd go ahead and do it. Um, and then, uh, so care over the cold winter months. Uh, if you've got a greenhouse, if, it, if it's cooling down pretty low at night, then, uh, then just watch your watering. You probably aren't gonna have to water as much. Feeding, it's not gonna grow as much, so still continue to feed, but don't do it as heavily as you typically would in the spring and summer months. Um, and other than that, you're pretty good. Watch for insects. Sometimes insects will lay their eggs in the soil of your herbs, and when you bring them in, uh, to the, the greenhouse, then those, those insects don't die off because there's no winter time. So then they typically are going to uh, kind of continue to uh, uh, grow in population. So just watch for insect issues and, and you know, control with an organic spray like a neem oil or spinosode soap, uh, which, which would be a great control. So you got a couple options there. But great question, Patrick. Um, so all right, so back to bulbs. Bulbs, there's a lot, a lot of things that you can do with them. Uh, of course, I love them in the landscape. Whenever I use bulbs in the landscape, um, I recommend planting them in masses. Uh, masses are always going to uh, be uh, more beneficial and more benefit the bulbs because they love being around each other and it's gonna actually help them multiply and it'll save you some time. So instead of planting individual bulbs in the landscape, you know, dig out a hole, a, a trench, uh, you know, a swath, any kind of shape that you want, um, and then just fill it with the bulbs, and then make sure the right side's pointing up. But bulbs are as simple as dig, drop, done. I mean, it's really that simple. You can dig a hole, you can drop it down in the hole, you can put some soil back over the top of it, and you really can be done, especially when we talk about daffodils. Daffodils are one of my favorites because they're super easy to grow. Nothing really messes with them, so you don't really have a lot of squirrels or, or, uh, or vole issues. So a lot of us in this area deal with some squirrels and voles digging up our tulip bulbs, but growing daffodils around your tulips or, um, or in the landscape, uh, daffodils are great because nothing really messes with them. Uh, so that they're a great option and they bloom in the spring and they're super valuable. They're perennials. They're gonna come back year after year after year and they just get bigger and better as the years go along. And you really don't have to do much. You can divide them if you want to in the future. So in the fall, you can dig them up and move them around your yard to kind of spread the wealth. Uh, but they're very, very easy. They're very, uh, they're very uh, uh, reliable, and it's a great perennial that you can plant in your landscape, and it's super valuable. So, for example, here I've got this uh, this 28 pack of daffodils, and you're going to see this a lot on the packages. I'm going to try and show these packages to you. But if you see that name, you're going to see Narcissus, and you're going to see that on a lot of your packages of your bulbs. Narcissus is the the uh, the, the, the original name of a daffodil. We call them daffodils. But Narcissus, if you see that, that is a daffodil. And you'll notice, of course, that pure yellow bloom, super, super noticeable. 
A lot of them can be fragrant. They come in whites, little shades of pinks, uh, lots and lots of different variations, lots of different colorations, uh, some that have both colors in it. So there's a huge choice of bulbs that you can get. Um, and, and of course, checking out your local garden centers is gonna be where you're gonna get probably the best selection and the best quality too. And that's really the most important thing is getting some good size bulbs so that you get a reliable bloom on that first year and many years after that. So really check out your bulbs. There's a lot, a lot of choices. So before I get started on my uh, container, I wanna show, I, I just wanna talk about what uh, some of the planning process, because I think that's the most important thing. Whenever you do any kind of project in your, in your landscape, in a container, take a little bit of time, just plan it out, think about what you wanna do, uh, think about what you want the end effect to be, um, and just a little bit of planning goes a long way. So what's great about bulbs is on the package, you're always gonna find probably the most important information. The other good thing is if you're planting bulbs in the fall, which is why we're talking about fall bulbs, that's the season we're in, is in the fall, um, is, most of your bulbs in the fall are gonna be perennial because they're gonna go through the winter season. So you're gonna plant them now in the fall, they're gonna go through that cold time frame, which they need in order to bloom. So it's very important to know that most of these are gonna come back, I mean, all of them are, otherwise we wouldn't plant them in our yard in the fall. So you really don't have to worry about hardiness level. Now, when we get into the spring bulb season, uh, when we're talking about different types of plants then, then you might wanna be a little bit more careful about what types of bulbs you're planting. Uh, because some of them might not be perennials, uh, but most of the ones that we carry are perennials. So when we talk about cannas and, uh, and, and all the different ones that you can plant in the spring, I'm kind of you know, escaping me now what, what you can plant, but there's a ton of them, a uh, huge selection. Um, but, uh, but in the fall, you know they're gonna get through the winter season, so you don't have to worry about hardiness. But look at your package because it's gonna tell you all the information that you need. What I see first is, of course, the type and the color. Pictures are great, so this is a tulip. This is a Darwin tul tulip, um, so not to get way in depth into tulips, um, but Darwin hybrids are going to be a little bit shorter, so they don't get quite as tall. And they're more reliable, and usually what happens with tall tulips is they tend to fall over. You know, the, the, the head of that, the flower, gets so big that it can tend to kind of fall over, whether it's in a container or the landscape. Um, but Darwin hybrids are a little bit shorter. It'll tell you the height on here too, so it gets 18 to 22 inches tall. So that's only about a foot and a half to two feet tall. Uh, what it also tell you, tells you is when it blooms. And this one says blooms in mid-spring. So when I went to pick my bulbs for my container, I want them all to be in, in mid-spring. Now that's just me personally. So when I chose this selection, I want them all to bloom at the same time. I want to put on a huge show. So now they might not all bloom at the exact same time, but they'll be very, very close because this, uh, this trumpet, uh, Dutch Master uh, Daffodil, is gonna bloom in mid-spring. It says it right here on the package. Blooms in mid-spring, gets 16 to 18 inches tall. So it's gonna be a little bit shorter than the tulips. And I love a yellow and a pink combination. And they both bloom at the same time. Then I picked out Mascara, which is another one of my favorites. Mascara is a really reliable bulb. It's a little tiny one. You get 60 in this package. So I've got tons and tons of these little bulbs. They're really kind of cool looking too. Uh, but this one blooms mid-spring and it's six to eight inches. So just from doing a little bit of planning, I said, okay, I want three different heights so that they all can show off. Um, and I want uh, the same bloom time. Now you can do it differently. So what I did was I real quickly just went through just to grab a different selection of bulbs. I'll show them to you. Um, and you can get a whole season. I mean, you can get spring to summer blooms with your fall bulbs. So this is the first one I grabbed was this snowdrop. So this is a giant snowdrop or a lejeune, um, um, or sorry, Galianthus. Uh, so this one blooms very early spring. So if you've ever seen these snowdrops blooming in your landscape or ar around the neighborhood, uh, they bloom super, super early. I mean, I'm talking, it could be January, February when these are blooming. So that's a very early spring bloomer. Then we've got the Grigi eye tulips, which are slightly shorter. So these are a uh, little 10 to 12 inch tall tulips, but these bloom in early spring. So je again, just a different option, different idea, really pretty orange color, actually got some variegation in the leaf, but lots and lots of bulbs. I'm just showing you that there's lots of different seasons that you can get blooms. So I've got a very early spring and now an early spring. And then we can do a early to mid spring with hyacinths. So I've got hyacinths, which is another great perennial blooming bulb. And then I can go into mid-spring with this checkered lily. Look at that. That's a really cool one. So checkered lily is a mid-spring. And then just a regular spring, which is ranunculus. Ranunculus bloom kind of consistently throughout the, the spring period. So there's just another time frame. And then alliums, which 
you know, really can bloom in a lot of different times, more towards the summer typically with alliums, but this one is actually called Purple Sensation and it blooms in late spring. And then I've got the Magic Lily, which is a Lycoris, um, and this one grow, blooms in late summer. So now we've got bulbs that we've planted this fall that we can get a whole season's worth of growth out of. And that's why I love them so much is because you get all of this different growth and all of these different bloom periods. And so you can really, when you make your container, take a little bit of time and think about when you want your bulbs to bloom. I want to put on a huge show, so I want them all to bloom in that mid-spring time frame, which is why I chose these. Plus, I like the color combination, so you want to think about your colors too. So we're thinking about bloom times and colors. Uh, if you want them to bloom at different times, if you want an, an early spring, a mid-spring, a late spring, then you can do that and you get lots and lots of different colors throughout the whole spring season. I want to really put on a show, so that's why I've got them all blooming at the same time and then look at your color combinations. Uh, once you get home with those, or really while you're still here shopping around, think about what you're gonna plant on top of it. Uh, because that's what we're gonna do today, actually, is we're gonna fill up this clay pot, and you can do this in any kind of container. You can do it in a plastic pot, you can do it in a ceramic pot, terracotta is great. Uh, you can do it in a lot of different containers. Anything that's gonna hold soil that's got drainage holes are gonna be great. Uh, let's see, we've got, I think, uh, Jane asked a question. I planted bulbs in a container last year. They did great. Dug them up in summer and let dry. Can I plant them again this fall? Yes, Jane, you definitely can. Great practice. And you don't even have to do that, Jane. So, so if, they're, if they're daffodils, tulips, uh, hyacinths, uh, muscari, you can actually leave them in that container. Maybe just put it off in, a, in another location. Uh, one thing that I'll tell you as we go along is after that foliage starts to kind of get a little yucky looking, you can cut those off. But uh, Jane, if you don't want to go through that, that process of drying them out, you can actually leave them in the, in the container, save yourself a lot of time. Now, if there's certain ones, like let's say an elephant ear that doesn't quite get through the winter season, then yes, digging those up, letting them dry out, bringing them in uh, to the garage or a shed or something just to keep that really, really cold temperature off of them, and then planting them again in the spring. But typically with your fall planting bulbs, you don't have to worry about any of that. So Jane, next year you can just let them go. Um, so any kind of container is going to work as long as it's got a drainage hole. That's the most important thing we want all of our containers always to drain. We're going to grow this outside. So we definitely want to grow them outside in an area uh, that can get some sun, uh, but can take a little bit of shade, uh, can get some rainwater would be great. But even if not, then you can water by hand. So this can be done on a front porch, a deck, uh, a patio, uh, even just out in the landscape. If you want to just do it on the landscape, it's a great option. And then you can always move it closer. So uh, think about what you want to plant over the top of it too. So get your container. All you really need for this, uh, th this uh, 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 bulbs and containers um, uh, example is a container, potting soil, which I'll show you here in a second, your bulbs, and then something to plant over the top. I'm going to keep it simple. And I'm actually going to plant pansies over the top. So pansies are a great one because they bloom all winter long. I picked this one. This one's actually called the Sunrise Coastal Mix. Uh, one of my favorites. Uh, it's a, the Matrix series of pansies. The reason I love this one is because it's got all the colors that I picked out here. So we've got some purples. So you'll see some of that purple color. The yellow. They all have the faces. And even this raspberry kind of pink color. So with this color combination here, it's going to almost match perfectly with my plants. Now it doesn't have to. Uh, if you love orange pansies or you love yellow pansies, plant what you want in there. Uh, you can also do some of the cabbages and kales. Uh, there's lots of ornamental things you can do there. Snapdragons work as well. The only thing that I want to tell you that probably I wouldn't recommend is planting something that's got a really kind of thick, aggressive root system. Not that the bulbs couldn't get through them. I still think they'll get through them. But uh, something with a lighter root system. So if you've ever planted pansies before, then you'll notice, as I take this one out, it's got a nice light root system, so it's not too thick. Something that I think of that probably won't work as well to allow the bulbs to come up through would be um, like a grass, like an ornamental grass. I love putting ornamental grasses in containers as your height, um, but something like that uh, is going to have a pretty aggressive, pretty strong root system, and isn't going to allow those bulbs to come up through. So. Think about that. Think about the different types of plants in there. You can make a combination if you want to with different types of plants. You can put a pumpkin in there for a little bit of color if you want to. So just by adding a little bit of a pumpkin or something in there uh, would be perfectly fine. Take it out before it rots. Um, put a little bit of pine straw underneath it, a little bit of mulch to keep it from rotting as, as quick. Uh, but it's a really, really easy thing to do. So that's all you're going to need. It's something to plant on top, a container, your bulbs, and some potting soil. So let's get started. Well, I did have one other thing that I wanted to show you. Um, you can also buy 
uh, uh, combos. So this is a combination. So this actually has hyacinths, narcissus, which is daffodils, and tulips. So this is a great little mix. So you can buy these combinations that have all the different things. This one's kind of got a corally mix to it. So it's got the white daffodil with kind of that peachy colored center. And then it's got an orange tulip and then a kind of pinkish to salmon colored hyacinth. So these are a great option too. If you don't want to think about making your own kind of combination, then you can just grab a couple of these combos here. Now, how many do you need? How many bulbs do you need? How many plants do you need? Now I want the pansies to fill up the top. So I'm going to keep it real simple. Um, I'm just going to do five pansies in the top. We'll get to that point. Uh, I grab some bigger bags of, of bulbs. And if I have extras, then I can always plant them in my landscape. So that's what's great about this is you can always take them and plant them somewhere else. So I always like to have a little bit of extra. Plus, I really want to put on a show. So I really want to fill up this container. Uh, and we're going to talk about a little bit of that planning process once you get all the materials back home. So now I've got my bulbs. I've got my pansies. I'll put this up here a little bit to get it out of our way so you can see what I'm going to do next. So now I've got my terracotta planter. I just chose terracotta, uh, one, because uh, this is a kind of a nice bulb pan size, so, or a, I guess you could say a mum pan or a mum pot. Uh, mum pots are typically going to be a little bit squattier, so I don't need as much soil here to fill this up. Um, plus, it's got a little bit of a wider base all the way through. It doesn't have to be that. It can be a lot of different things. Typically, a ceramic container, like something like this right here, you're going to see it's going to have that same width all the way through. This plastic container right here, this is a plastic uh, a pot that you can plant in. I can fill this up with soil to about here, and then I can start this, uh, the, this, uh, this planting from there up. Typically what you want to do is measure your container. So that's going to be one of the first steps that I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I've just got a ruler right here. I grabbed this blue one. So hopefully you can see it a little bit better. It's just a 12 inch ruler. If I was going to plant in maybe this, I might need a yardstick. Uh, but basically what I'm going to do is just kind of look at the height of this container. This is exactly 10 inches tall. So 10 inches from the, from the base of the container up to the top of the container. Now that I know how deep my container is, I can go back to my packages of bulbs because all of our information is going to be right here on the bulbs. Make sure I got all the right ones here. So when I look at the muscari on the back, there's this little tiny drawing. I don't know if you can quite see it there on camera, uh, but there's this little tiny drawing. It's going to tell you the plant height and it's also going to tell you the planting depth, which is really, really important for this practice. We're, we're going to need to know the planting depth. For muscari, it's three inches. For tulips, it's four to six inches. And for this daffodil, it's six inches. So now I know my planting depths. I've got three, four to six. So we're going to say right around four to five, um, just to kind of keep them all different. And they don't have to be different. If they're all on the same level, that's fine. Let's say you just want to do daffodils and you plant them all on the same level. You're going to be perfectly successful with that. I'm going for different plants, a different mix, which means I need to know all the different planting depths. And then daffodils are going to be six inches. So what do we need to do? We need to get to six inches. So get a good potting soil here. This is our McDonald potting soil. This is our organic potting soil. This is a great one. You can use all purpose. Uh, try and use a good quality potting soil. Uh, you know, it's kind of the, the, the old adage of invest in your soil and then your plants are going to benefit from it. So always make sure you're getting a good high quality soil. So I'm just going to open this up. And then really what I need to do is get about four inches of soil in there. So clay terracotta pots have usually a pretty big hole in the bottom. Uh, so I'm actually going to take a little bit of this napkin right here which will allow the water to go through, but also kind of keep my area a little clean. You can use weed fabric. You don't have to use anything. The soil will uh, eventually kind of stop falling out of the bottom of the hole, but terracotta pots typically are going to have a somewhat of a big hole. So that's probably about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. So that's a fairly good size. So using a coffee filter works, just anything. Because I'm inside and I'm working in this work area, I don't want to make a huge mess. So I'm going to just put that little napkin down in there just to keep that drain hole from releasing a bunch of soil. And then I'm just going to pour this in and I'm trying to get to about four inches. Now, the nice thing about terracotta, even a ceramic pot or a plastic pot is you can actually mark off your layers. So if I wanted to, I could take a Sharpie and figure out exactly where my four inch layer is. Another thing to think about is this is a 10 inch deep pot. I want about maybe a half an inch to an inch of a lip because that's going to make watering easy. So, um, so, so always leaving yourself a little bit of room. So when I said it was 10 inches, I probably should have made that about nine and a half. Let's say nine, just to keep the math real simple. Um, so I need three inches of soil. I don't want to put it, push it down real hard. Let's see where I got to. 
So, yep, I've got about seven inches. I actually need to take out just a little bit. So I put in a couple, probably just a couple inches too many. So we'll just take a little bit of uh, the soil out and then we'll remeasure. So there we go, we're right at where we need to be. Well, it might help if I had my ruler right side up. There we go, seven inches. So now if I'm leaving about an inch depth, then that's what I want. I want seven inches of clear space because I wanna leave about an inch of a lip. See, I think I saw a couple questions. Um, can I plant peonies in a container? Yes, you can. Uh, in fact, we've got peony bulbs in right now. Uh, so definitely a, is a great option. Uh, how much deeper than the planting depth does the pot need to be to allow for the roots? Great question, Wendy. It doesn't, they don't need a whole lot of depth. So really, uh, bulbs don't have a extremely deep root system. So anywhere from a one to two inches would be, would be plenty. You don't need any more than that. So you don't need a huge amount of depth before you plant your pansies. What's, what Wendy's uh, uh, saying there is the amount of soil that you need below the bulbs to allow the bulbs to grow adequately well. Um, and you really don't need a whole lot. They really don't have a very deep root system because all that food source is stored right there in that bulb. So they really don't have a, a hugely aggressive root system, so you don't need a lot of depth. Here I've got about, see, we got nine, so I did two inches of soil, which will be plenty, perfectly fine. So just a little bit of measuring there. Now, before I go any further, what I wanna talk about is how you're gonna plant the bulbs in here. And you can do it a lot of different ways. So I grab my little whiteboard here just to kind of explain this to you a little bit better because we're not going to get anything until uh, we're not going to get any of the bulbs growing until probably around uh, in containers bulbs pop up a little bit earlier. So usually about um, I would say March is when they'll start to grow maybe as early as mid February depending on the weather depends on mother nature as to how quickly we warm up but containers are going to warm up much faster than the ground soil so you're going to you're going to be seeing a little bit more action a little bit sooner so you can do this in a lot of different ways i'm going to try and draw this upside down so hopefully you can see this and i'm not an artist this will just be kind of so you can kind of get an idea of how you want to do this you can do a scatter a scatter pattern is very easy because you can just kind of put them all in there and they're all going to mix and that might be what I do, but I might try and get a little creative too. So I've got a circle, kind of, right? I messed up my circle there. So I've got a circle. And what I'm going to do is, let's see if I can hold this a little bit closer, is I'm going to think about how I want these, these bulbs to bloom up. So what you can do, and I always like to put curves in if I possibly can. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a curve in there. And then we're going to put a T. We're going to say tulips there. And then we're going to do another little curve. And we'll go D for daffodils. And then M for muscari. So that's one option is you can do it that way. So there, all I'm doing there is just kind of planning out where I'm going to plant the bulbs. The other option is to do a scatter pattern, which is very easy. Once you plant your pansies on top, you're going to have the same effect or you're going to have all that same root system. So I don't have to worry about too much of that. Now, if I was going to plant like an ornamental grass in here, then I might have to say in the back here where I've got this bigger aggressive root system, then I know I'm not going to get a lot of bulbs through there. So I'm going to omit that section. But a scatter pattern is just basically planting bulbs all over the place. It's going to look like a chocolate chip cookie. So really, really simple idea there. I'm going to put this off to the side so you can kind of see. Scatter patterns mean what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the bulbs in, in, the, in one level and then I'm going to fill it up with a little bit of soil, put another layer. Uh, but I think I'm going to try and get a little creative and try and do this. So I get different sections. Um, and again, this is what I would do in the landscape. So I know when I talked about bulbs in my uh, bulb basic video last year, uh, last fall, which you can check out on our website, uh, I talked a lot about doing swales and different types of swaths of color. So it's got kind of the same idea. Let's say we have a, you know, a flower bed here or a house. I'm going to try and do this upside down and I've got a bed that comes around here. And then maybe those are my, that's my, you know, sidewalk that comes around. So this is a flower bed. So here I'm gonna just plant, you know, a big swale of color, and then maybe I'll come back over the top with another group of color, and then I'll finish it off. So just by doing something like as simple as that, I can plan out my bulbs planting in the landscape. So this is the similar, similar idea 
in a container is I want a couple different types of swaths and different colors. So once you kind of draw that visually, I'm more of a visual person. So once you kind of see how you want to do that, it might make a little bit more sense on how you plant them and how many you plant. Um, but we're going to pack them in there pretty well because I really want to put on this show. All right. So now we're at our six inch depth. We've got a plan. We know what we're doing. Um, I'm going to put six inches of soil on top of these bulbs. So the first one we're going to start with are the daffodils. They like to be planted at a six inch depth, remember? So, and then I know my heights too, which I didn't think about. I mean, I did. <laughs> I didn't tell you about as I was doing this. So tulips are going to be kind of the taller one. So they're going to be in this back portion. And then the daffodils are also going to be in the back, kind of coming over a little bit more to the front. And then the mascara is going to be the shortest, so that's going to be the front of my container. So when I lay this down like this, my mascara is going to be up in the front, the tulips and the daffodils are going to be in the back. If you do a scatter, they're all going to mix, it's all going to look great. So this can literally be like no thought process, uh, just a little bit, or you can really think about how you want to do this. All right, so I'm going to take these off and just open up my bag of bulbs here. Now remember, I'm starting with daffodils. They're the deepest one. They need six inches of depth. Now, when you pull your daffodil bulbs out, a lot of people wonder which way is up and which way is down. Well, daffodils are pretty easy. So daffodils are going to tell you they've got the pointy top at the top, and that's where the foliage and the blooms are going to come out of. And then they've got this little tiny root system down the bottom that you're going to see, and that's what goes down. And I'm just going to nestle it into the soil a little bit. In fact, I might just throw a little bit of loose soil on top just to give myself a little bit of area to kind of push it down into. And that'll just stabilize it so as I kind of work on the top, and I'll show you this too. So now I'm trying to remember my pattern. So I'm trying to, I'm looking down at my picture and just kind of remembering the pattern. I'm gonna put these pretty close to each other, and every once in a while you'll get a bad bulb. Look at that, that one's a little squishy. So I'm gonna actually omit that one. I'll probably plant that out in the landscape somewhere. The bulbs should be nice and sturdy and nice and strong and nice and hard. So I'm just going to put these, I'm going to put, I'm literally putting them right next to each other and I'll show you this here in a second. So we're just kind of thinking about that same pattern. And this is going to put on a huge show and we'll see how many we can get in here too. We'll know how many daffodils we're going to have. Ooh, and look at this one. This one's cool. This one's really flat on one side, which is going to be perfect to go right up against the edge of the pot. So I can really put in a couple more. And if they overlap a little bit, that's okay. So this is going to overlap just a little bit from the tulips. They'll all work their way up through, and it'll be perfectly fine. Okay, so let me show you that. Hopefully they don't roll. That one rolled. Actually, let's do this. I'm going to put in a little bit of soil just so that it kind of holds them in place. We're going to put a little bit of an, a, an inch of soil on it anyways, but this will kind of help hold it in place so that I can turn it so I can show you. So you see that? I've got my same area that I drew. So it's this nice little pattern, this nice little curved pattern here. And then my tulips are going to be here and then my mascara in the front. And how these grow or when they grow, you can always turn your container. So on your front porch, you can always turn it one way or the other. So even if it starts to come up in the spring and you're like, ooh, my mascara is in the back, just turn your container. You don't have to worry about it too much. All right, so let me do my measurement. Let me see where I'm at. I did put a little bit of soil in. My ruler in, see where we're at. And remember, we want the tulips to be about in the four to five inch range. And I still want to leave that inch for my lip around the container so that I can water it very easily and not have soil spilling out. So I really want it right at about, so that would be four inches with an inch lip, that'd be right about five inches. So I need a little bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and lightly cover up my daffodils. I'm going to leave some of the tops of the daffodils showing just so I kind of know where they are and bring it up to about the same level all over the place. And there we go. Now, before I do the next step, and you can kind of see, it almost looks all like soil. You can still see a little bit of the tops of the, of the daffodils. Before I get any further, I do want to add some bulb food. Now, you can use lots of different things. I've got bulb tone, which is a great one by Espoma. You can use bone meal. What bulbs love is phosphorus, so that's going to be your middle number. Whenever you're looking at your numbers on your uh, bag of fertilizer, the middle number is phosphorus, and bone meal is almost all phosphorus. So on Espoma's bone meal, 
It's a 4-12-0, so it's very high in the phosphorus, uh, which is great for bulbs. That's what creates nice big bulbs. This is our old school Dutch, uh, Dutch bulb food, great for the Dutch master daffodils, but uh, this is what they use in the Netherlands to grow all of these great bulbs. Uh, so this one's a 785, a little bit higher in the nitrogen, but still got a lot of uh, phosphorus. I'm going to use uh, Biotone Starter because this is my kind of go-to. Uh, it's almost like a granulized root stimulator, uh, but Biotone Starter has mycorrhizae and beneficial bacteria, and I just love uh, the results that I get out of it. Not only is it going to help these bulbs, but it's going to help the pansies that we put on top. So I'm just going to sprinkle just a little bit over the top. Doesn't have to be an exact science. The more the merrier. You can't overdo it. That's the nice thing. So just a little bit. That's going to feed my, my daffodils and it's going to feed my tulips uh, because it's at that right level. So that's why you always got to think about, you know, what you're doing as you're going along. Now, if I, if I forgot, I can always add a granular fertilizer, granulized uh, plant food on top after I'm done. Now, these are my tulips. Tulips are the prettiest bulbs. I think they're just very, very pretty looking. They have a lot of that white coloration in it. This is what you typically are going to see with a tulip bulb is that really pretty white color. Now, I will br throw in one other tip here. If you have never planted bulbs before, you might want to wear gloves. Now, I've planted lots and lots of bulbs before. Uh, some people have uh, different types of reactions to bulbs, especially when it comes to hyacinths. Um, now, I'm not planting hyacinths. I did grab this hyacinth. I'll tell you about that here in a second. But hyacinths, some people uh, react, their skin reacts a different way to it. Uh, but if you're unsure, just grab some gloves. It's a good practice anyway to wear gloves. So I'm going to go ahead and put mine on. Uh, tulip bulbs. Same thing as a daffodil, the pointy side goes up, the flat bottom. You really won't see a whole lot of root system coming out of the bottom of a tulip bulb, um, but basically just plant it with the pointy side up, real easy. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna slightly overlap my daffodils. Now this package only has 10, so I gotta use these a little bit more sparingly. I'm not gonna space them too, too much. I still want them fairly close. And I'm just doing the outline of my, my swale. And I'll show you what this looks like when I'm done. And all this takes is just a little bit of planning, a little bit of thought. And you're going to have an amazing container in the spring. So there we go show you that. So now you can see my next grouping there. Well, that little tulip ran away. But basically the same idea. Push these down so you can see them. And it doesn't have to be exact science. If your tulip bulb happens to roll over a little bit or move a little bit, then that plant is going to know where up is. It's going to grow, you know, the roots are going to grow with gravity. The, the, the stems and the flowers are going to know how to get to the top of the soil. So even if they have to work around something, be perfectly fine. So there you go. You can see that. You can maybe even see a little bit of my tulips over here or my daffodils. Sorry. So my daffodil tops are here. They're at six inch depth. My tulips are over here. They're about a four and a half, five inch depth. Perfect. Now I can just throw a little bit of soil on the top again. And I don't have to feed on this one because they're at um, because they're in right next to the biotone. The biotone's right on top of the daffodils. It's right at the bottom of the tulips. So I've got that done. Now I always like to kind of just see my tops as I do the next layer. And what you can do is even just like drawing in the sand, just do that right on top of your dirt um, as you're um, filling it up. So I can kind of draw the pattern of where my mascara need to be. All right, let me do a quick measurement. All right, so we need, we need what? So three inches for the mascari. You can always check your package. Three inches for the mascari, and I need an inch lip. So I'm at four inches. I'm exactly perfect. So really, really good. So I'm just going to level that off right there. Now that did pretty much cover up those tulips. Tulips are only about an inch. So when we put it at a five to four inch depth, and we put an inch of soil on top, you're pretty much going to cover them up. So now what I'm going to do is just draw a little bit of a line where I know those are. I can kind of feel in the soil, I can feel the tops of them, so I know right where to put my mascara. I can still kind of reach down if I need to and, and feel where the top of the daffodils are as well. Now these are a lot of fun. These are really easy. 
These are tiny little bulbs, so be careful. And there's 60 of them in this package. Sounds like a lot, but I'm gonna put them again, kind of bulb close. So I'm gonna put them right next to each other. Uh, but these are really cool looking little bulbs. Kind of similar to a, a hyacinth bulb. So let's see if you can see that. Almost looks like a little onion almost. Uh, but same thing, you're gonna see a little bit of the little roots down at the bottom and a pointy top. And that's the side that you want up. So I'm just gonna plant those right in here. In fact, what I'll do a lot of times is I'll just kind of dump them in. And then I can just situate them all, which is gonna take just a minute. And again, if you don't get every single one exactly perfect, they will find their way up to the top. They're usually stronger if you get them planted at the right point or get the point facing up and the root system facing down. Usually it benefits the plant in the long run uh, and it's gonna increase your blooms um, and the look of your container. So trying to get those right facing up really does help. So we'll just position these real quick. I'm actually gonna use probably a majority of them because that's about two thirds of the bag. So I think I might be able to get all of them in here. And if, again, if they overlap a little bit, that's even better. Just a little bit of overlap um, in this situation. Now, if I were gonna do a scatter, you would just scatter them on one level and then build your soil up, scatter them on the next. And that's really, really easy. And you get this great looking mix, uh, mixed container. So lots and lots of different options. A couple pop out over here. All right, let me see if I can turn that so you can see it. So there you go. Now, this is where my tulips were. This is my daffodil section, and this is my muscari. And it's just that simple. So now what I'm gonna do is just sprinkle a little bit of dirt over the top, just a little bit. I mean, I'm talking maybe a quarter of an inch here. And one other thing that I did do is I did measure my pansies. Um, and just so you know, most typically all six inch containers when you take it out is about a three, three and a half inch depth on the soil. So I know exactly how many, uh, how much depth I've got on those. Now, if I was gonna do different plants, I might need to measure my different uh, pot sizes and make sure that I'm planting uh, accordingly. Again, that's just a little bit of the planting process that really does help uh, kind of understand exactly what you're doing so you have a, a clear path as to how to create your container. All right, so I just did a little bit of dusting of that. That brings me right up. So let's see, I'll just check my measurement here. I still wanna be right about four inches. And I'm right there. I'm like 3.75 inches, three and three quarters. Now I'm just gonna take this Biotone starter just for another little dose. This is gonna feed my muscari. And get the root system just blowing up on that. And then it's also gonna feed my pansies. So my pansies are gonna get a great jump start. They're gonna use it. Um, and all those beneficial bacteria and mycorrhizae are gonna attach them, themselves to the root system and they create this symbiotic relationship that's just awesome, uh, that really benefits the plant uh, in the long run. Okay, so now I'm just gonna plant my pansies. This is really, really easy process. Uh, what I like to do is instead of um, damaging the root system too much. I don't like to take a knife. I don't like to score it too much. Um, I like to just kind of loosen up the bottom. You're gonna lose a little bit of soil, but that's okay. Just loosen up the bottom, maybe scuff up the sides a little bit, just to loosen it up. We'll do a little bit of picking, get that off, and then and just plant it. And you can plant it right on top of the bulbs, so you don't have to worry about where you're planting it. Now, because of a round pot, I've got five um, pansy pots. So I'm gonna plant all five on top and I'm just gonna plant basically in a four, you know, diamond shape, square shape with one in the center. You can also split pansies. A lot of your six inch pansies are gonna have really three plugs in it. So if you ever look in your pot, you'll usually see one, two, three little plugs in there and you can actually roll it open if you need to. So if you wanted to do that, you know, if you've got a skinnier side or maybe you've got a centerpiece plant that you're using, uh, then you can always just kind of gently loosen that root system and then just pull it apart just like that. And just like doing like that, I've created a much flatter with those three pansies. And because we're using the Biotone starter, that's gonna get that root system regenerated right then and there. So you're not gonna to have to worry too much about hurting the root system. Get my other pansies. And I just love this coastal uh, sunrise mix. It's really nice, the Matrix series. Love, look at that one. 
I don't know if you can see that, but that's got a little bit of that raspberry pink in it with the yellow. It's just really, really pretty mix. I'm going to put that in there. Actually, I just see something now. And sometimes you're going to see this. I mean, the Coastal Mix is really three different types of pansies. This one, I've got more of that bluish color. So you can see that blue there. And you can see that raspberry color, that pink. Uh, this one's a little bit heavier in that and not so much in the yellow. So I'm actually going to move this yellow one back to back because it's got yellow and blue. So I want a little bit of that pink facing forward. And then we'll just take our last pansy. I've got these four out on the outer edge and I'm going to put one in the center. Now you don't have to do that. Pansies will get about, uh, about six to eight inches uh, uh, wide, maybe even 10 inches, depending on, on how quickly they're going to grow. Uh, but typically they're not going to get super, super big. So I like to pack them in there. I like a little bit of instant gratification and it's going to be completely fine. And it creates this nice full lush look. Uh, if I were doing this at home, maybe four would have been fine, would have been plenty. Uh, but it's just kind of personal preference there and just having a little bit of extra, I think goes a long way. It really helps it out. All right, so now all I gotta do is just fill in my edges. So I'm just gonna take this pot. And we'll just go around the edges, fill in all the soil. We know we've got everything at the right depth. So this is gonna be really, really nice. And it's gonna look great all winter, see all winter long. So the pansies are gonna do great all the way through the, the fall season. And I don't have to worry about much, just a little bit of feed here and there. We'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, a little bit of deadheading just to keep those dead blooms off. And really other than that, you're gonna have a great looking container just this way, it would be perfectly fine. I can always take some mini pumpkins. I can dress it up for the, the fall holidays. Um, and then I can, um, you know, in the winter, I can put a couple little, you know, sprigs of, of evergreen, a little bit of conifer in there to dress it up for the, the holiday season. You really don't have to think too, too much about it. And that's it. So there we go. We've got our nice container. And you can see how that turned out. Turned out great. This is going to look great sitting on my front porch. And then in the spring, I'm just going to get a show. And a lot of times I almost forget about it. So a lot of times I'm like, all of a sudden the spring rolls around and I start to see all these things shooting up out of it and I get really excited because I kind of had forgotten that I had done it. So this is gonna be a great container. I think I saw a couple questions. Um, so the peonies, yes, you can do the peonies. How much deeper than the planting depth, Wendy? I got your question. Okay, so Carrie said, Mike, can I plant sweet potato vine in the same pot? So Carrie, yes, you can. Sweet potato vine, unfortunately, isn't gonna make it through the winter months here, uh, but you can use it. And sweet potato, along with like the ornamental peppers, mums, you can do all of those things. They're going to die once we get a frost. So once we get a hard frost, they're going to kind of peter out and fizzle off. Sometimes they'll come back. I mean, I've had success with petunias or uh, impatience and different things. Usually it's reseeding. Uh, typically it's not coming back from the same original rootstock. Uh, but uh, yes, you can carry. Carry the sweet potato vine is gorgeous, that lime green color. You might also look at some of the grasses. Uh, the acorus um, is a really, really pretty one. The ogon acorus would be a great grass, kind of a trailer. Some of the heuchras are a perennial. Um, sweet potato vine, if you've got it, carry, continue to grow it all the way until we have that first frost, typically around mid November, and then it's going to fizzle off. So when it does, you can rip it out and pop in a pansy or pop in something else. You've got a, a lot of options there. Uh, Instead of pansies, carries, yes. So yes, you could do it if you've got lots of sweet potato vine. It'll grow through that now. Sweet potato vine comes from a sweet potato or will form a sweet potato over time typically. Uh, but what you're gonna experience is it's gonna fizzle off once we get that hard frost. So uh, yes, you're gonna be per perfectly fine, carry with a sweet potato vine. All right, so then after this is gonna sit for about, I'm gonna let this sit for about probably two to four weeks, somewhere in that time frame, I'll come back and I'll feed my pansies. Pansies are heavy feeders. They really like a lot of food uh, and the bulbs aren't gonna mind it much either. Uh, so I'm gonna use my green leaf plant food, just our all purpose plant food. This is our traditional or our organic. And I'm just gonna feed my pansies about every five to six weeks, all the way through the winter season. Even if there's snow outside, uh, they still need to be fed. Um, and watch your watering. Of course, you're not gonna have to water a ton. It's the cooler uh, part of the, of the year. Uh, so water when, when the top two to three inches is dry, 
greatest tool that you have uh, in the garden is your hands and your fingers. So just put your finger down in the soil. At the top two to three inches are dry, then just water it. Really, really easy to do. And then in the spring, this thing is just going to erupt with all of these great looking uh, uh, um, uh, bulbs, these spring blooming bulbs. So now I can hold up these packages here. I'll hold up these labels so you can kind of see that color combination that we're going to get. We're going to get those pinks, the blues, and the yellows all mixed into this container. So this is going to look perfect. I mean, it matches perfectly. And you can always use these uh, labels to kind of look at your blooms to match. I mean, that's a really great kind of close match to that raspberry pink with this nice pink one. And this one's called Big Love. And then with our Dutch Master, that yellow is going to really pull out the yellow in our, in our Coastal Sunrise mix. And then my blue to purplish colored muscari is going to per be perfect with that kind of purpley blue color. So this great looking mix is just going to accent uh, with these pansies and then it's going to be this great show. Now what's going to happen in the in this mid to late spring, once the blooms are done on all my bulbs, um, the pansies are going to start to fizzle. So even in a container, I mean, in the landscape, I know we're always like, oh, I hate to pull out my pansies because they look so nice. Um, but uh, you, you want to go ahead and discard of your pansies so you can basically take off the top layer of soil. And then usually what I like to do is, is let the pansies go, let the foliage fade on your tool, on your daffodils, your tulips, and your muscari. Let it fade naturally. So a lot of us go out there and we cut our bulb foliage down uh, too early, too quickly. You really want your tulips and your daffodils and your muscari and all your spring blooming bulbs to lay flat and really start to almost go off color before we cut them off. Because even when it's laying flat, it's still producing food for that root system, still going through the photosynthesis process and all that. So if you go out as soon as they're done blooming and the stalks are nice and tall and you cut all that foliage off, then it's not gonna produce as reliably for you the next year. So leave all that stuff on there. That's why I love doing them in, in containers because I can take that pot and stick it somewhere that nobody's gonna see except for me. I'll water it every once in a while, but really I can just let it kind of, kind of decay a little bit and that foliage go bad. Once it goes bad, I can cut it off the top. I can leave it or I can go and start planting some uh, spring uh, annuals on top like begonias or uh, vinca or different things like that. I can bring it back out. I only need a couple inches of soil. The root system's not going to hurt. Then when that goes, I can pull it back off. I can keep this container going for probably about two to three years. Eventually, you're going to have to get in there and loosen up the bulb space. I put them in really tight. If you don't put them in it as tight, you're going to be fine for many, many years. I put them in there for really the show in the spring, and then I usually take my bulbs and transplant them into my landscape somewhere. But this is a great way of using bulbs. It's a lot of fun for anybody, uh, any, you know, any you know, gardener of any age. It's a really, really easy project. The kids love it because almost 100%, the kids are going to forget that we planted bulbs in here. And then in the spring, when they start to show up, it gets them all rejuvenated and excited. And there's nothing like the sign of spring when tulips and daffodils start to come up out of the soil. So I hope you all enjoy this. This was a really, really simple kind of project. Uh, so enjoy. Do this at home. Try it. Get some bulbs. Get some pansies. It's really, really easy. You can elaborate on the top if you want to and plant up a little bit of a, of a nicer combination. Uh, but this is a great way of doing it. I think Carrie said, yeah, I take my vine inside but can't with the bulbs, obviously. Yeah, and, and that's a great question, Carrie, or a great point and, and something that I thought about uh, that I didn't mention was this hyacinth here. Um, if you're buying bulbs, and the reason I brought this is because uh, this is called a prepared bulb. If you ever see on your package prepared, it's usually gonna be on the side, it'll be pretty big, or on the box, it'll say prepared. And you're always gonna see that on typically hyacinths, paper whites, amaryllis all of these holiday blooming plants. If it says prepared, what that means is they've already put it through a cooling process. So they've already put this thing through what it thinks is winter, and then you can plant these indoors. So if you wanna grow bulbs inside, it's still a great time to do that here in the next probably you know three to four weeks. Usually I like to say first of November, uh, maybe late October, come in, get some prepared hyacinths. Uh, paper whites are great. They're a, a narcissist as well. So paper whites and amaryllis, they have all been put through that cold season and then you can plant these indoors and they think it's spring and they start to bloom inside. So it's a really, really great way. I see we've posted um, uh, the fall in love with your local, uh, or sorry, a, a past webinar. And that's where I did a fall container workshop where I actually planted bulbs underneath my uh, fall container, underneath my fall pansies. And I think I used an ornamental kale in that one. Um, so hopefully they'll post the picture of what it looked like in the spring when it was blooming. So uh, you can see that it really, really does work. It's a great 
great thing to do. Uh, let's see, I think that was it. Hedda said, thank you, thank you all. I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, get out in the garden, plant some stuff, get some dirt on your hands, uh, plant up some containers, plant some pansies, and don't forget your bulbs. Uh, they will really reward you in the spring season when they start to come up out of the soil and you'll be excited and you'll love it and you'll wanna do it from here on out. So enjoy everybody, have a great day. We'll see you next week. Uh, hope to see you then. Hope to see you in the store too. Come on out, it's gorgeous. The weather is amazing. See y'all soon.